Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me thank the HR Focus team for inviting me to share a few thoughts and perspectives with you today. I remember presenting sometime in the year 2000 at a radio conference in Cape Coast. I remember sharing with the audience that we were moving from analog phones to digital phones. And we had just introduced GSM to Ghana. And we were showing them what the new phones would look like. And I was confidently telling them the phones will fit into our palm and it would even have cameras. And I'm sure they looked at me and said, yeah, right. When we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. But today, the world has moved on. We are discussing rapid changes in technology. A majority of us are struggling to keep up. As individuals, I think it is easy to decide to ignore some of those technologies. However, as businesses, who are operating in competitive environments, responding quickly and nimbly to the change is core to your sustainability, and this is important. As a result of digital transformation, no organization is too big to fail or too small to succeed. You either adapt or you die, and I dare say, there's nothing like survival. The issue is that our customers have choices. They are engaging with us differently and they expect great experience, whether they touch you online, in your shop, or through your contact center. They want the best experience. Today, they say what they want and with the advent of social media, you no longer control the narrative for your brand. The customers will decide where they want to express their view, how they want to say it, when they want to say it, where they want to say it, and sometimes you find out after 5,000 people have liked the post and others have shared it. So you don't control the narrative. And that is why you need to be on top of the game. Customers today are not loyal to brands. They just want relevance. Your brand has to deliver his need. And you need to find a way of adapting the way you operate so that you can be competitive. And this is not easy. So when your CEOs and your marketing teams hear what your competitor is doing, hear what the world is doing and how the customer is complaining, what do they do? They rush to HR and they complain about the recruits that you brought and they ask you to find a replacement urgently so that they can become more digital and then they can compete. We are all in a hurry to digitize old services and call it digital transformation. And HR is sent off to look for talent across the world. But I, I, I beg to differ. Real transformation will actually start from the leadership. So they shouldn't come to you to change the people. The transformation has to come from the leadership mindset. And our readiness to embrace this new way of working. The agile way of working. If you do not have belief from the top, you can forget it. We must be ready to drive the culture of digital innovation. And what do I mean? I mean a change of mindset. A change of attitude. A change of practices. And then you have the technology at the core of your business. Don't transform old services and call it transformation. Transform the mindset transform the attitude and the practices that we have. And that is why when the Amazons of this world are working, they don't work like the typical retail because they came with a different mindset and a different approach and technology was at the core of what they delivered. 
takes strategic planning. Plan change moving the organization to start becoming data driven. Many organizations are still writing their strategies based on anecdotal information. This is not sustainable. Strategy has to be written with information that is data driven. When your staff come to you to share ideas and to ask for something and, and to, 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 to purport to deliver a direction, ask them to support it with data. Data driven decisions going forward. And this is important when we are formulating our strategies and how we make decisions, as I said. We must encourage innovation. Let them think differently. Ask them why they want to do it the way they are doing it. A change of mindset. This will mean, my dear HR people, my dear line manager who is present here, that you now have to allow your, your team to develop a culture of fearlessness. That means they are empowered to say what they think. They don't need their boss to be breathing over their shoulder every day. A culture that is not rewarding compliance, but rewarding impact, rewarding the outcome. That is where the world is going. Many companies, including Vodafone, are beginning to face this reality. And we are adopting the agile way of working. Today, the traditional way of working is a linear 12 months budget cycle. Three to six months for project timelines. We have to go through approval processes. We have to move one step at a time. Technology sits in a different building from marketing and we protect our turf. The world has changed and we need to change. What do we do? We gather requirements and then we do feasibility studies and then we design and then we code and then we test and then we come and show the outcome. By that time, your competitor would have done the next four things and released the next four products whilst you were going through your feasibility studies. Because you want the outcome to be perfect. That's how we have all been trained. But in the new way of working, we seek outcomes that the customer can touch in shorter, faster steps. And this is where the transfer, this is what we are calling the sprints. So you no longer wait for six months to say the product is ready. You say, what is my minimum viable that I can go to market with? And even when you are changing an existing product, you don't wait for the new one to be completely ready. You go with shorter sprints of what the customer can touch. Because like I said, the customer is making a decision every single day and he has no loyalty to your brand. He wants relevance. With the outcome of every sprint, you have improved something. You can measure what has been achieved. The customer journey has improved. The product has improved. It's not the same as yesterday. The service has improved. And then you can move to the next sprint. What is important is that you are putting the customer first. This is the change that Agile brings. You stop being internally focused and you think about how do I get to this customer first? How do I make a change in what I gave to him yesterday? That is what the agile mind of thinking brings. Delivery early, value early. There are different agile frameworks and I'm sure you've heard most of them. Scrum, Kanban, develop, uh, De DevOps, XP, etc. And definitely you need an expert to take your organization through, especially the management team. And then you can decide what works best for your, your company. We are using DevOps, we are using Scrum today in Vodafone. But what is core in all the different frameworks I mentioned is the focus on the customer. If the mindset will change and will start being adaptive to change, then there's better collaboration between the teams. Today in Vodafone, I give you an example. We have teams who are working in squads. 
There are a team of about nine people in one group, and that's what you call the squad. They are employees, and we have moved them from their current roles into those functions. And so you start as HR worrying about what happened to the job that he used to do. But you can cut out a lot of non-essentials and start moving into creative delivery and co-creation. We have had to employ developers because we did not have adequate number of that skill set in-house. The people in these squads, the same person who used to sit under a line manager, today is self-directed. 100% dedicated to that squad he or she works in. They sit together from commercial to IT. They don't sit on their floors again. They have a corner for themselves and that's where they sit. They have their scrum boards. They huddle every morning. They come and they do how they have somebody called the, um, the product manager, the product owner who owns the idea and the vision. So as, as a team, you have set out to say, we need to deliver the Vodafone app and we need to get the mobile and the fix into the app. We want to make sure customers can resolve their faults in the app. They have their vision and they move. They sit together, they huddle together, they have a custom related mission and we don't control them. That's scary. We only empower them and we trust that they will come with the outcomes. And every sprint is every two weeks. So every two weeks they come with a new outcome and say, now faults is, is delivered through the app. Tomorrow they can deliver mobile. Tomorrow they can deliver post-speed. And that's how they deliver in sprints. They have responsibilities within the team. Like I said, there's the product owner who owns the vision, and, but he's not the boss. And there's, there's a scrum master who is teaching them how to use the agile methodology so that they stay on course. Because don't forget, we are all coming from the old system. I met our squad recently, one of the squads. We have many squads now. We have come along the journey and today we have many squads who are delivering different things. So I met one of the squads um, sometime this week. And I was having a chat with them and trying to understand where they are. They came to present one of their sprints, one of the outcomes. They are working on a robot who is now responding to customer queries on Facebook uh, Messenger. So I tried to understand. I met the product owner. I met the scrum master. I met the tester. And then I asked one guy, so you two, what do you do in the group? And he says, oh, my title is conversationalist. And I'm like, okay, so what do you do? He says, you know the robot goes through machine learning. And the more you interact with the robot, the more it learns. And so my job is to converse with the robot and teach him what the customers will be asking so that he will be smart enough to answer their questions. Fascinating. Now with these squads, you now have what we call a chapter. That is many squads working because you can have them working on customer journey as a topic. And so you will have a chapter lead who takes care of these squads and make sure that maybe the architects in the teams are well trained and the delivery is consistent. But this chapter lead focuses on just his core business. He can do his day job and manage the, the squads. As the squads grow, you can have what we call the tribe. Today you have your enterprise team, your consumer team. That becomes a tribe. And they are working to deliver towards that big objective. There's a tribe leader. The tribe leader is the one who holds the big budget and shares it among the squads. But once that is done, you don't control them, you don't touch them, they do it and you trust them for the outcomes every two weeks. So is this driving productivity? I think that's the question. Yes. This way of working, at least from our experience, is driving productivity. People are empowered. Same people I used to see in previous roles are delivering without any boss telling them what to do. Once you have been clear on your expectation, leave them alone. <laughs> There's transparency. There's daily inspection on progress amongst themselves because as I said, they meet every morning and they huddle and they have a scrum board. Because they deliver in sprints, you have the opportunity as well to refresh your deliverables so that you avoid the risk of, of waste and project overspends. And then you can go to their scrum board. 
on the scrum board, you have visibility of what they are doing daily and because they update it daily, you can see what is yet to be done, what is being done, what has been done, what is being tested, and what is ready to be released to the customer. So there's accountability because they have to be visible. And there's early business value, as I said, because they deliver to the customer every two weeks. The customer is your focus. And every two weeks, there's something that you deliver new to the customer. Even if it is a journey of how he opens a bank account, you can improve that journey with your squads daily. Do not think, because I'm from a technology company, that agile methodology is for product-led environments. No, it is far from the truth. This concept embraces industry, every industry. It requires discipline, strict focus on cutting out non-essentials in favor of, as I said, co-creation, collaboration, learning, focusing on the customer, focusing on the customer, because that's where the competition is. Even in the way we work, generally, even in the way we recruit today, we have tried to embed technology. So we have a tool we call the HiveView. Now HiveView is an artificial intelligence portal. So today it will do the fair screening of all recruitments and filter out. And it brings real efficiency into the process of hiring. And there are many agile technologies that we can all harness into our various businesses. Let me caution though, that agile working means some roles will certainly become ineffective. And any time I have an opportunity to make, meet academia, I say this to them. Let's raise critical thinkers. Let's raise problem solvers. Because when you put these people in a the squad, they have to solve problems for customers. A lot of the things that we are training our staff and our students to do can be done by robots today. My call center agents, what the robots today we have, who is just now learning can do, my agents cannot move at that speed. So we have a responsibility as HR people to start reinventing our staff so that there's not panic and fear because even if we don't do it, as I said, the world is doing it and you have to move along with it. So start retraining our people. Across Vodafone, we realize this. And so the entire organization was given mandatory digital essentials. Everybody had to go through it. And then for the CX level, because we have to define the strategy, we all had to do a face-to-face -face classroom training on Scrum and digital essentials and how to use digital to define strategy. I say this, it sounds sophisticated, but it is basic and it is a requirement. If we want to start moving into the agile way of working and start touching the customer and delivering value. To end, I will say that we have an opportunity of a lifetime before us. Let's harness the human resources and never lose sight of our present circumstances. Times have changed and we must change with it. We must seek new ways to innovate, to transform, to produce results with the smartest and most efficient of approaches and Agile is one of them. I thank you all.